This is what you want to do. You want to get the beans ready overnight. So you just soak them in water, right? And literally 12 hours it's done. You can put any kind of beans you want. You want to put red beans, black beans, garbanzo beans, your choice. I'm going to explain to you the wonderful nature of any of these beans and all of these beans. Uh, once those are uh, rehydrated, you want to get the rest of your ingredients ready. You want to dice the meat. I, I choose to have a, just a small amount of meat for the flavor, and once you saute it, the flavor comes out. If you choose not to use the meat, you can use chicken as a substitute. But frankly, you can just use stock. Uh, the base of all of these dishes has to be onion and garlic. And then when you want to put your vegetables in, root vegetables complement uh, crock pots and, and slow cooking. And uh, root vegetables mean your turnips, it means your sweet potato, it means jasika, um, jasima I believe. And so any root vegetable is, is, uh, is very advantageous because of the food content, the nutrient content. It's full of fiber, it has protein, it has minerals in it. Similarly, beans, the people who eat beans, there are uh, known pockets around the world where people live to 100, they're called centenarians. And so the, what is common about those people, they incorporate beans with pretty much most of their meals throughout the, the week. And so when you're combining these root vegetables and beans, you really have the most nourishing combination. And then the additional vegetables that I like to add in really bring the whole flavors together, like celery. Celery is a wonderful, wonderful vegetable that just brings it all together. And you finish it off with a little garnish. And what I choose is the salt-free, garlic and herb combination. It's really a, a simple, um, there's, no, there's no thought necessary. Uh, you just add as much as you want for, for taste. So now here, get, get started. And what I like to do is make sure that the pot is hot. The hotter it is, when you put the first layer of oil, it makes a non-stick layer, frankly. Then you put as much uh, desired oil as you want. I choose to use good quality olive oil. Then I want to saute my onions first. I, the reason I put the onions before the garlic is because the garlics can sometimes get a little bit burnt before they get sautéed. So the onions go in first, very shortly after that I'm going to put the garlic in. And then I'm looking for that slight browning and as it browns I'm also taking the smell because as the smell changes you'll see it becomes more caramelized, it becomes sort of sweetened. And then now you're ready to then add the meat or substitute to the meat. You know, I choose to use a little bit of beef. You don't need a lot of quantity. It's really the flavors there. And if you dice them small enough, you'll get a bite in pretty much all your, uh, or, or, or all the bites that you take. And then you want to, again, just like the onion and garlic, you want to saute the beef so you get that less than boiled flavor. When you first uh, put in beef, and if there's too much water, it's boiling the, uh, the beef. What you want to do when you saute is, you get the, the flavor, the caramelization going on. Then you add some salt and garlic to that mix and then you're ready to throw in your vegetables. I prefer to put the celery in because just like I'm caramelizing the onions and the garlic and sauteing the beef, I'm incorporating the flavor of the celery and the carrots and they bring about a sweetness and a blending of the flavors before I then go ahead and uh, throw in my root vegetables, all my root vegetables followed by all the different types of beans. And again, you can choose any kind of beans you want. And the combination I gave here is my combination. You could substitute any number of those things. It's just the principle that how easy is it to just prepare something by soaking it overnight? Uh, how many vegetables would you need to just to cut up and just put them together? Literally, this dish can be done in 20 to 30 minutes. And finally, you just want to add enough water to get to two thirds the height of the food. I personally don't like to go above the food because it becomes a little bit too watery. Now, if you're looking for a soupier consistency, then raise the water level to where the food have uh, risen to. I like to make it more of a stew, so I make it about three quarters the height of the level of the vegetables. And the last thing is to do is set the settings for what you're looking for. In my case, I did a quick pressure cooking because it would be done in literally 35 minutes.